As of the time of recording this, we're less than 72 hours away from the global launch of Modern Warfare 2, where we can jump in and grind out new weapons, camos, maps, modes, and things like Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. But then we'll also have things like Spec Ops, and for those that haven't experienced that already, the full campaign. The full game's massive offering will be available in just a bit of time, so today, in this one, I wanted to take some time and give you some heads up tips for the best experience going into launch. Tips for launch, if you will. In this video, we'll be jumping into some preparation tips, some top level things on what to expect in terms of gameplay, and all things on how to best utilize this launch window to your advantage. So as we go along, drop your thoughts below. What are you looking forward to the most out of launch? If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, or you're just excited for Modern Warfare 2, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. Let's see if we can hit 5,000 likes on this. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 2. We've got so much upcoming still here for launch that you won't want to miss. And as mentioned yesterday, it might be a lofty goal. Not sure if we can hit it or not. But if you want to help us possibly hit half a million subscribers by launch, make sure you subscribe. You guys absolutely blew me away yesterday with this. So if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, Code Espresso is still 30% off over at gfuel.com, link in the description below. But that said, let's talk about these tips. First, I want to talk about some things that you can do and take advantage of even before launch for some preparation tips here. Number one, make sure you have the game preloaded if you have a digital version of the game. Now, this might sound self-explanatory, but I'm sure there's going to be people that will boot up the game or attempt to and be like, why can't I jump into it? on launch day. Now, beyond the fact we're likely going to see a day one update here at launch, the last thing you want is to be met with the install screen when you should be jumping into the game, realizing you still have 50 gigabytes or so or whatever to download for the entire game. Xbox and PlayStation both have the ability to pre-download the game right now. PC on Bnet as well as Steam has the ability to start pre-downloading as of tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time, so make sure you end up getting that out of the way. Actually, now coming back to this while editing, it seems like the day one update also is now pre-downloadable for PlayStation at at the moment, adding another 40 gigabytes that you have to download. Xbox is likely going to follow. Same with PC when the downloads start tomorrow. But this is nice. That means that you should be able to end up taking care of the entire download and installation ahead of the game launch so that come launch, you can jump right into it. Second thing here is that if you end up having the campaign early access, you pre-order the game digitally, make sure you go in and check some of your settings. If you don't have campaign early access, just be kind of aware that you'll want to do this here come launch. But for this, you can adjust your settings for the full game in campaign early access right now. Now, we'll have a full settings guide going up on the channel at some point in the launch window. Not entirely sure of my schedule. It's not locked down 100% just yet to give you a definitive day on when to expect that, but sometime before Saturday. But if you want some basics on what you should be on the lookout for, there's a few different categories. Number one, firstly, button layout and sensitivity. That's a big one. That is something that is entirely preference-based. I can give you my recommendations, but they might as well be a moot point at that point because it's entirely up to you. Movement settings, like your sprint options, if you're interested in slide canceling. Some of the ADS mount options will change the button combo required for that. Your quality settings are also important. Consoles have a few different options here with this, but a lot of this is geared towards PC with a level of quality customizations you can do there. If you're on PC, make sure you're taking advantage of some of those NVIDIA tool sets as well. DLSS is a great way to boost your performance a little bit. Things like motion blur and film grain settings, I'd turn both of those off personally. I don't think they're necessarily needed. I think the game looks better without those things. If you're using controller, make sure you're checking your aim assist settings. And most importantly for console players this year, perhaps, is a first for the Modern Warfare franchise, FOV on console. Console. That's something you want to play around with. And again, you can test out in campaign to see what feels good to you for the full game. And finally, just kind of some preparation stuff here. If you've got any bonuses from certain promotions or retailers, make sure you have those redeemed. If you care about things like double XP, especially that double weapon XP, that can be really useful here for Mountain Dew codes and things like that. But also some cosmetics there if you care about those. Some retailers and promotions have been going out for that kind of stuff. But let's move on over into the launch general sort of tips here. First and foremost, when we think about multiplayer, jump in and experience experience the weapon platform system. The nice part about weapon platforms, at least so far what it seems like, pending that nothing has changed, is that we have a shortened leveling system, but this leveling system now incentivizes the use of other weapons by playing to unlock certain things. With weapons being unlocked through different receivers that are unlocked via weapon progression on different weapons overall, it's incentivizing you to play outside of the box, perhaps. Like, I'm not much of a battle rifle player, but to end up unlocking the SMG, the FSS Hurricane, in the beta, we had to end up leveling the FTAC Recon M4 battle rifle. So that's something that again incentivizes you in that regard. So don't stay too long on a singular weapon. Try them all out. It does nothing but help you out in the long run. Now, if you want to jump in with more than just bare weapons, there are a couple of ways that you can do this already. Number one, that vault edition gives you the FJX Cinder weapon vault, which is the M4. So if you're a camo grinder, while it's not explicitly stated that every weapon will be leveled up under the M4 platform, it seems like you should be able to jump right into that camo grinding aspect of those weapons, given the vault unlocks every attachment. And one would think that by association, 
you'd be past those weapons leveling where you'd unlock those attachments naturally. But either way, you end up having all of the attachments unlocked. So right out of the gate, you can kit your M4 and subsequent weapon platform weapons with any attachment that you have available and earned through that M4 progression. But beyond that, we'll also have a few blueprints at launch that can grant you attachments and thus a better build for certain weapons for early on in your gameplay experience. We of course have that M4 weapon vault, but we've also seen the side impact X13 auto and the frontal impact TAC 56 from the beta rewards here that will come along with a blueprint design, but also some attachments as well. And that Union Guard M4 from the campaign for completing the entire campaign, that'll have stuff you can jump right into. And depending on when you jump into the game, if you guys end up taking advantage of the Twitch drops, again, we'll have those active on the 28th over on my Twitch channel if you want to check that out, link in the description below. Upon 60 minutes of watching, you'll end up also getting the yet to be confirmed MCPR 300 Watchdog 141 variant. So we have a handful of different blueprints that will be available on day one for you to end up using. And again, if you don't have weapons completely leveled up, you can jump in with at least some attachments on those. Now, moving on over into some gameplay tips beyond just talking about the launch experience from a top down level, these are going to be sort of to mentally prepare you for what to expect. The first and foremost thing that I want to talk about is the gameplay experience and making sure that in engagements, you have your gun up and ready. I know that this is something that might fit more so in towards like our actual how to do better tips, which we'll touch on again post launch. But the time to kill is so fast within this game. And while I'm not saying to camp, I'm more so saying to analyze where empty spots are in the minimap. Despite not having dots, seeing open space is almost as useful to access where enemies could be. If you're in an area where there's not many teammates with you, chances are you could be in enemy territory. So go into corners ready to take gunfights, strafe it, or just simply be ready for a gunfight at the very least. Having your gun up, making sure you get that first shot off is a crucial way to do well on day one and beyond. Now, beyond that, in terms of gameplay itself, get active. If I may suggest, without calling out or so the dubbed Sentinels of Modern Warfare 2, try to get active in your matches early and often. We don't know quite how the timing will work just yet, if it's the original times like the beta launch times, or if it's an adjusted earn rate like the end of the beta, or perhaps even faster, but the perk system this year, it tries to guide the player towards being productive for their team in the way of perk rollout. Your bonus and ultimate perks are not earned right away as soon as the match starts. You end up earning over time two different perks throughout a match. Your bonus perk and ultimate perks are affected not only by time, yes, but it's also sped up in earn rate by things like kills, captures, and other things like that. So if you sit in the corner from the match start, you're going to need at least two minutes or more to get your first perk. Again, depending on if earn rates are adjusted or the same from the beta, either weekend one or the very last day of the beta. But if you play aggressive and you get into the action, you could have your bonus perk like 30 seconds into a match of domination with a capture and a few kills. So while I get that there's always going to be campers, help yourself out by getting active in the matches and earning your gameplay tools. Now, overall, in terms of if you're going for progression or something like that, one thing that for me as a camo grinder, one thing that I will highly recommend here, and I'll definitely suggest from day one, is making sure you do your launchers early and often. This is something that a lot of the times players will go sort of category by category, and that's totally fine, entirely understandable. I get that trying to knock everything out in a sort of uniform fashion, but a lot of the times one big mistake players will make is saving launchers for the very end. Oftentimes, launchers are probably some of the most tedious things you can do in terms of either ranking up, like it seems like we'll have to do this year with Modern Warfare 2, as opposed to last year with Vanguard, the max weapon level of launchers was level one, not only just leveling it up, but also going for those camo challenges. So what I would absolutely say is get them done simultaneously as you rank up or progress through camo challenges for other weapons. Have a rifle class with a launcher, an SMG class with a launcher, whatever the case, so that you can focus on those primary weapons, but at the same time, kill two birds with one stone, that if you hear somebody call in an aerial streak or something like that, you can take it down with your launcher. More oftentimes than not, earlier on in the game's life cycle, we will see that overabundance of use of things like UAVs and the more easier to shoot down streaks. So make sure you take advantage of this and just do it as you go along instead of making it the most tedious thing to deal with at the very end, and that's the last thing you have to do. And talking about progression, talking about camos and things like that, if you want to take advantage of, or I guess avoid tier one playlists, depends on how you end up feeling about them. Now, Tier 1 Playlist, this is essentially just hardcore renamed. Tier 1 is going to be those variations of the game modes as detailed with less health, no HUD, and all that kind of stuff. It was detailed officially in a blog post today, but it's something that I don't quite know why they changed the name of hardcore to Tier 1, but that is what they did. But again, if you want to take advantage of it, it's a great way to rank up weapons to do camo challenges just because everything is so quick to kill in that regard. Pistols are very easy, a very viable option even for like mid to long range. Anything goes and it makes it a more so level gunfight so long as you can end up getting your gun up you can progress through some of those harder weapons way easier beyond that in terms of generalities of gameplay i would highly suggest partying up not only just for like the banter that you can end up getting from playing with some
some of your best friends, but also because it offers you some advantage in terms of information, knowing where enemies are by callouts from your teammates, having additional eyes to be able to spot where players could be, and so on and so forth, absolutely makes the game way more easy to dominate in that fashion, as opposed to if you were playing solo without game chat or party chat on, and you were just kind of relying on your mini map or hearing gunshots off in the distance. While I know it's not possible for everybody, if you can play in a party, I would highly recommend it here. It'll greatly improve your gameplay experience and performance. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of launch is prioritizing what you think is important. A big part of this is what I mean is with Warzone in mind, though it also can apply to many other things as well. Spec Ops, making sure you have your Spec Ops classifications ranked up so that you can take advantage of those come raids in Season 1. But also, when we come back to the topic of Warzone, make sure you rank up your priority weapons first. What you primarily use in Warzone 1, make sure you take care of those weapon classifications before Warzone 2's launch. There's really not a whole ton of time, what, like three weeks or so, between the launch of Modern Warfare 2 and the launch of Season 1 with the launch of Warzone at that point. So make sure you take advantage of ranking up your rifles, SMGs, maybe battle rifles, LMGs, snipers, whatever you find most important to that overall gameplay loop if you decide to springboard from multiplayer into the Warzone and DMZ experiences. Make sure you have those weapons that you want to use leveled up so they're ready to go come day one and launch of those two following experiences. But beyond that, that's my tips here for launch and what I think can help make launch smooth sailing for you, what can help you out the most independent of actually in-game doing better. We'll of course have a tips video as we always do after launch, but for the time being, I wanted to take a look at like a top-down perspective on how to best manage your launch experience and from what I've learned the last couple of years, share that with you guys, what's helped me out the most. So that said, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys looking forward to anything in particular here in regards to my Modern Warfare 2's launch, multiplayer, spec ops, maybe campaign if you haven't played it already. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2. We'll keep you today with absolutely any and everything you need to know. And of course, if you'd like to join us on the road to half a million subscribers, I'd love to have you. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.